Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan to face a no-confidence vote on Monday. Argentines honour victims of civil military dictatorship. Brazilians face the impact of rising oil prices. We begin with Pakistan, which is in the midst of a major political crisis. Prime Minister Imran Khan is set to face a no-confidence motion on Monday after Parliament was adjourned on Friday as a mark of respect to deceased le legislators, while the Speaker of the House, Asad Kaiser, said that the adjournment was a routine procedure, the move was criticised by opposition members who suggested it took place to give the government time to bolster support. The National Assembly was convened on Friday after the opposition filed a no-confidence motion against the government. The Imran Khan-led government is on shaky ground as close to a dozen of his legislators have defected. Certain key allies have also left his coalition. However, it's unclear how these allies will, will vote when the no-confidence motion comes up. There have been multiple reports that Imran has lost the confidence of the military, which is the most powerful institution in Pakistan. The military's backing was key to his rise to power back in 2018. Media reports also say a compromise deal is being worked, which involves early elections. Pakistan is facing this political crisis, while it also faces a massive economic crisis. Inflation has caused great difficulty to the people there. Talks with the International Monetary Fund are at a stalemate following the government's decision to reduce fuel prices. The IMF wanted the government to cut down on spending. Over the past few years, the country has also seen rising religious fundamentalism. Our next story is from Argentina, where on the 24th of March, tens of thousands took to the street to remember victims of the US-backed civic military coup of 1976. In Buenos Aires, wearing white scarves, shouting, memory, truth and justice, members and sympathizers of the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo and the grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo marched from 9th Julio Avenue to Plaza de Mayo, carrying a large flag with photos of the 30,000 victims. Over 100,000 people flooded the plaza and surrounding streets. Human rights organizations have been at the forefront of the struggle for justice uh, and truth about the disappeared relatives or victims of the, the coup. Massive demonstrations and marches were held in cities such as Santa Fe, Rosario, Salta, Cordoba, Tucumán and others. This is the first commemoration since the pandemic. The civic military dictatorship, which lasted all the way till 1983, was marked by state terrorism and grave human rights violations. It's estimated that over 30,000 students, activists, trade unionists, writers, journalists, artists and other citizens suspected of being left-wing activists were kidnapped, tortured and disappeared. The military junta silenced any political or ideological dissidents, even those seen as antithetical to its neoliberal economic policies. The armed forces even seized their property and their children. In Brazil, an increase in petrol prices has had a massive impact on activities across society. The poor and working class have been the worst hit as this rise affects food, transportation and every other aspect of life and leaves little money in their hands for uh, other expenditures. The war in Ukraine is one reason for the increase, but a more structural aspect is how Petrobras, the country's oil giant, has priced its products. We bring you this video from Brazil de Fato on how price hikes are affecting the people of Brazil and the reason behind the rise. When Jose Washington has a good fortnight of work, he earns about 1,500 reais, which is almost $300, as an app delivery worker. That could be a satisfactory average wage if it wasn't for the costs with fuel that, in recent months, don't come cheap to Jose. He has to work more hours to compensate for the negative impact on his income. When I had to pay lower bills, I had to work 8 or 7 hours daily. Now, I must work between 10 and 11 hours every day to make ends meet. The reason for the successive changes in fuel prices is the rise in prices at the refineries, which brought an adjustment for more than 24% in the price of diesel, almost 19% in gas and 16% in cooking gas price. With such drastic changes, one can only resort to experts to understand the dynamic. It's caused by Petrobras pricing policy. The company dollarized its prices and opted to dispose of some parts of itself. It chose to give the profits to the shareholders and not reinvest in the process of refining oil or the distribution of oil and gas. Petrobras became a predatory company regarding the national market. Why? 
because it increases the fuel price and fuels are the basis of the energy matrix and the transport of people and cargo. Therefore, it causes a chain reaction. And in this chain reaction, everybody suffers. However, the poorest part of the population suffers most, since it almost doesn't see in its hands the money it earns. It's not just cooking gas that is going up. Everything we buy is going to be more expensive. How are we supposed to do with a wage that hasn't increased? The pandemic and the war in Ukraine are partially to blame in this situation, but the problem people are facing is older. In 2016, after the coup against President Dilma, Petrobras pricing policy changed. Now it uses what we call International Parity Price, or PPI in Portuguese. It considers the dollar exchange rate, which it shouldn't. The Brazilian currency is too devalued compared to the dollar. So this is the first impact. And it also takes into account the price of a barrel of international oil, although we produce our oil here in Rio. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. We'll be back next week with more. Uh, for details on all of these stories, please head to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.